Now that we have a way to build a naive space classifier, we need to figure out if it's actually working. Here, we will look at three evaluation metrics that we can apply to classifiers. Accuracy, precision, and recall. So this is what we have so far. We have naive based classifiers, which work using two ideas. First, they look at words naively. This means that we're going to take our unigrams, bigrams, trigrams, and then just shake them up and put them in a bag, basically, from where, from where we can pick them. We call this naive because, of course, we know that the presence of an n-gram determines the presence of the following n-gram, and so forth. However, in this approach, we're going to ignore that uh, n-grams are dependent on one another, and we're just going to have them like mixed up. So we assume that the presence of one n-gram not, does not affect the presence of another n-gram. So we're going to have our n-gram counts, and then we're going to use Bayesian probabilities to figure out if the presence of a certain n-gram, for example, the word greatest in a movie review, increases the probability of a document being a positive movie review. So we have vectors of features for our training items, and then we have labels for what they should be. With this, we can classify documents uh, for whether they belong to sports or not. We can identify languages, we can perform sentiment analysis, and we can do a lot of classification. But how do we know it's working? How do we know that it's actually uh, assigning the correct labels to uh, things it hasn't seen before? We're going to look at three different metrics to evaluate our model. Accuracy, precision, and recall. So the very first thing, just as a reminder, is that we need to take all of the data that we have and split it into at least two parts, a training set and a smaller testing set. Uh, you could do 90-10 or 80-20%, but what matters is that the items of the training test are the ones that you're going to use to calculate your probabilities for the model. And then you're going to take the the vectors of features from the testing set and the labels that they have and you're going to run these through the model and see if the predictions of the model match the labels that you know each item belongs to. So you're going to match the labels in the testing set with the predictions of the model and to try to figure out if the model is doing well or not. And the first measurement is very simple. It's just accuracy. It's the percentage of items where the label in the testing set matches the prediction from the classifier. So if you take uh, a vector in the testing set and it's for a positive movie review, and then you run that through the classifier and it says that the review is positive, then these two match, the prediction matches the label, and we know that the model performed correctly. So we have the count of all of the elements that were predicted correctly divided by all of the elements in the testing set. And this is the percentage of accuracy from 0% to 100%. There's two measurements that are a little bit more com uh, complex and let us figure out, truly figure out what's going on. Let's say we have positive movie reviews and negative movie reviews. What are the things that could happen? Let's say that these uh, dots, the gray dots, are your um, elements, your movie reviews. And so the ones we have on the left are the ones that are tagged as positive, and the ones that we have on the right are the ones that are tagged as negative reviews. Four things could happen, as we see here. The green region has things that are labeled as positive, and when you run them through the model, the model predicts that they are positive. So because these two match, we say that these are true positives, because they are positive reviews, and the system correctly predicted that they were positive. That is one thing that can happen. A second situation is the one depicted in the red region. We call these false positives. Here, the model, I'm sorry, the test set has an item labeled as negative, but when you run it through the model, 
it's predicted as a positive. So it is a negative review that is incorrectly predicted as a positive review. We call this a false positive because it's categorized as positive, but this categorization is wrong. This is the red region. The third thing that can happen is the one in the dark gray region of the chart. Here you have positive items where in the testing set they were labeled as positive, but when you run them through the model, the prediction comes out as a negative review. So they are actually positive, but the model incorrectly predicts that they are negative. We call these false negatives because they're predicted as negative, but this prediction is wrong. And this is the dark gray region to the left. A final permutation is the one in the light gray region to the right. These are true negatives. So they are items that in the testing set are labeled as negative, and then you run them through the model, and the model predicts that they are negative. This prediction is correct. So they are negatives, and they are true negatives because they're predicted as such. So we have four things that can happen when we have a label that is either positive or negative. And so here we have uh, our calculations for precision and recall. Precision is um, out of all of the things I labeled as positive, how many of them are actually positive. So how many of the things I selected as a certain uh, category are actually from that category? In this case, if I labeled a bunch of movie reviews as positive, how many of those that I labeled as positive are actually positive? This is precision. On the other hand, we have recall, which is how many of the actual positives did I manage to catch and label as positive? So here we have the combination of the ones that I labeled as positive and the ones that I mistakenly labeled as negative. So out of everything that was actually positive in the testing set, how many of them did I correctly label as positive? This is recall. So as you can see here, precision is how many of the things I labeled as positive were actually positive. And recall is how many of those that were actually positive did I manage to label as positive. Here's the formula for each of them. Uh, for example, for the positive category, the position of positive are the items that are correctly predicted as positive divided by the items that are correctly predicted as positive plus those that are wrongly predicted as positive. Um, so the false positives. Recall is the correctly predict the items correctly predicted as positive divided by those correctly predicted as positive plus those wrongly predicted as negative. So these are the positive ones that the computer uh, labeled incorrectly. How would this work in practice? Here we have what we call a confusion matrix. We have the actual labels from the training set, actually in the columns. So some things are in testing set labeled as urgent, as normal, and as spam. And as a matter of fact, in the whole testing set, um, 16 items are labeled as urgent. In the testing set, 100 items are labeled as normal. And in the testing set, 250 ones are labeled as spam. And this is obviously an example for emails. Um, so those are the columns, the actual labels in the testing set. How about the rows? This is what the model uh, assigned to the items. So the model predicted that 19 elements, 8 plus 10 plus 1, are urgent. The model predicted that uh, 55 plus 60, 115, that 115 items are normal. And the computer predicted that 233 items are spam. So obviously some things worked and some things didn't. Let's take a closer look at it. We will calculate the precision and the recall for the spam category. And you can work out the rest for yourself. 
if we want to calculate the precision, we would need to look at the predictions, at the row for spam. So out of so the system classified as spam, 3 plus 30 plus 200, uh, 233 emails. Those were the ones that the system predicted were spam. And out of everything that it predicted was spam, how many of them were actually spam? Only 200. So out of the 233 that the model said were spam, only 200 were actually spam, or 86%. This is the precision. How many of the things that I said were spam are actually spam? 86%. Let's calculate the recall using the column. The training, the testing set had 251 spam emails. So out of those 251 spam emails that we know we have, how many of them are actually seen as spam by the classifier? Only 200. So there were 200 were guessed correctly and there were 51 others that it saw as either normal or urgent. So it was a mistake. So out of 251 items that we know are spam, the system only saw 200 of them, or 80%. This is the recall. As you can see, precision 86% and recall 80% for the spam. So it's doing fairly well with those. It's not doing so well with the other categories, particularly with urgent emails, probably because it has so few of them and it would need to see more to improve its predictions. So in summary, Precision is um, how many of the things I labeled as spam are actually spam. And recall is how many of the things that were actually spam did I label as spam. There's one final measure that people use and it's called the F score, which is an attempt to incorporate both precision and recall into a single number. As we have the formula right here. And there's a parameter there called beta, which can be adjusted depending on who we want to give priority. Maybe you want to prioritize recall, in which case you choose higher beta values. Maybe you want to prioritize precision, in which case you choose lower beta values. Most usually people choose a value of beta equal one, which means taking both of them equally into account. So the F score uh, is an attempt to get information from both the precision and the recall into a single number. One final comment is that, um, remember how in the first two weeks we looked at rule-based approaches at either using finite state transducers to get brief reverbs or trying to get linguistic rules into our code, for example, into a chatbot? What uh, you might remember is that those rules have high precision, but very low recall. So for example, when we made a rule, such as sentence is equal to a noun, a verb, and a noun phrase, or a chatbot rule that said, hello, insert name, those rules had high precision because they captured uh, the elements that belong to the rule really well. So whenever you said, hello, name, the rule worked really well and it caught that. So it's high precision. But the rules fail to capture many items that are relevant. There's many types of sentences that cannot be described with this structure. For example, um, many sentences are noun, verb, and noun. But if we modify just one thing, like adding an adverb in front of a noun, uh, like, actually, I love pizza that would uh, may mean that the rule no longer works and we would have to create a new rule that has adverbs in front of the subjects. Uh, in the case of the chatbot, we had a rule to capture the name of the person, but there's a hundred ways in which someone can introduce themselves and give you their names. So you cannot account for all those 100 greetings which actually exist, so it means that you have low recall. You have a, you have a very low ability to recognize potentially important sentences in a large corpus, just from your rules. We use numerical based systems like naive based classifiers precisely because they allow us to have high precision and high recall. 
So in summary, we use three different measurements when we evaluate classifier systems. We use accuracy, which is just how many items are classified correctly. We can use precision, which is how many items are classified as category X. Um, how many of the ones classified X are actually X. And we use recall, which is how many of the items of the X category that we actually classify as X. We can also use F scores to summarize both precision and recall. In our next video, we're going to look at an example with code of how to put everything together, a classifier and its performance evaluation.